Did you know the story of Jesus who loves you? Jesus who died for you, Jesus can save you. Did you know that he's the one, son of the one God, son of the living God, Jesus can save you. Jesus all day, Jesus every day, Jesus when I go to bed, Jesus when I wake. I want to live a life so I hear him say, well done, my child, enter in. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the International Gospel Hour television broadcast. I'm Jeff Archie. Delighted that you're with us today, and I'll tell you what I want to do as we start off the highlight segment. I want to talk about our friends at House to House, Heart to Heart, or HouseToHouse.com. Now, does this look familiar to you? Have you received this from a Church of Christ in your area? If you've never received a House to House, Heart to Heart, I want you to send an email to us at International Gospel Hour and send an email or call us toll free at 1-855-IGH-6988. Contact us and just say either on the phone, send me house to house. That's all you've got to say. Give us your name and address and we will send you a free copy of House to House, Heart to Heart. And then you'll receive other copies that are absolutely free. Great articles, for example. How about this one written by Andy Cates titled, What Standard of Authority? Identifying Marks of the Lord's Church. The New Testament is the only standard of the Lord's Church in faith and practice. In the first century church, there were no human creeds. The apostles were guided by the Spirit into all truth, John 16, 13. They left us the fully revealed written Word of God, Ephesians 3, 3, and Jude 1, verse 3. The early church continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. No person is to add to the Word nor subtract from it, Deuteronomy 4, 2, Revelation 22, 18, and 19, 1 Peter 4, 11. The omniscient God does not need man's input. His word needs no revision. The Holy Scriptures are all sufficient for man's salvation. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped unto every good work. We can also note from this text or from this article such things as Andy writes, we can understand the Bible and we can understand it alike. Otherwise, Jesus would not have said, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We read a little bit further, and I, I, I love the concluding thought of this article. Andy has much more to say about the standard of authority, but as we've seen, this is a great established article and has put out that it's God's Word, the New Testament, our standard of authority. And Andy concludes by saying this, it remains today, that is the Word of the Lord, the Word of the Lord endures forever, 1 Peter 1, 25, and we will be judged according to the Word, John 12, 48. If a religious organization holds some other book as its standard in faith and practice or perverts the truth, it is not the church of the Lord, Galatians 1, 6-9, and Colossians 2, and verse 8. Now again, friends, there's much more that Andy says in the article, but we just wanted to give a brief excerpt of the article, What Standard of Authority and Identifying Mark of the Lord's Church. And again, friends, you can find that in many other great articles in House to House, Heart to Heart. You also have an opportunity to fill out in any free tracks that you wish to have. You can also fill out a, a small quiz that you can also receive something absolutely free. Again, dear friends, if you've never received this in your mailbox, then let us fix that. Contact us at one 855 Six nine. I'm sorry, friends. One eight five five IGH six nine eight eight. You would think I would remember that. My own phone number. One eight five five IGH six nine eight eight. 
or contact us through our website at internationalgospelhour.com and just simply say, send me house to house, heart to heart. Give us your name and address. And now, friends, we're going to pause to hear from our Daniel Howell, and we'll be back with our Search the Scriptures segment. Did you know almost half of the global population has a smartphone? At the touch of a finger, you can access the International Gospel Hour by downloading our app absolutely free. You'll have access to our website, social media, podcast option, our YouTube channel, and other resources, all by the touch of your finger in the palm of your hand. Please download our app on your smartphone device today. It's absolutely free from International Gospel Hour. And now, friends, let's search the Scriptures as we continue thoughts from Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is a wonderful chapter about Jesus Christ, the Messianic prophecies, as we call it. In Isaiah 53 and verse 12, let's note the following. The verse says, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Let us note, if you will, friends, the phrase, portion with the great. Dear friends, let's speak about Jesus Christ today, and let's see, as we search the Scriptures, we see that he is great. Watch now. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Everything indicated in that verse means that because of what we have read about the Christ and his greatness, I will divide him a portion with the great. You know, dividing a portion with the great means that portion is still going to be plentiful. And to divide the spoil or what is attained with the strong. You get greatness through all this. But may we submit to you, dear friends, that Jesus is great because he overcomes the great. He's great because he overcomes the great. He is great overall. Listen to Philippians 2, beginning with verse 9. Therefore God also has highly exalted him, that is Christ, the great. He's exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Great. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Dear friends, there is greatness in those three verses. God exalted him, a name above every name. There is no greater name. And when every knee would bow, heaven, earth, under the earth, every tongue confess Christ, he is great, and in him is greatness. And do you suppose that if he is great, that through him you and I can be greater? How about Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14? For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Did you catch that, folks? Through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, did he? Indeed he did. Jesus destroyed the power of death, or that is the devil. He's greater than the devil. He will overcome the devil. He has overcome the devil. And Christ is great, friends. How great he will make us who are obedient to him. Not great on our own glory of what we can do, but great in the fact that God, through Christ, makes you and I Great. And through Christ, we are greater. Love this verse, friends. Love this verse. Divide him a portion with the great. How great that portion is and how great we can be through Christ. Let's pause and 
hear a few words about our website. Then we want to come back for a very special Handling the Word of Truth segment. Our website is internationalgospelhour.com. That's internationalgospelhour.com. Please check it out and listen to our other broadcasts, learn more of our history, download our app, request our free newsletter, and free Bible study. Also, check out our free resources available from our fellow laborers in the gospel. Yes, friends, all for you through our website at internationalgospelhour.com. And now, friends, handling the word of truth. For some of our newer viewers, those of you that have joined our broadcast along the way, we take this segment of handling the word of truth to handle or to bring to life, if you will, things that will help us in our lives. And as we search the scriptures for our knowledge, handling the word of truth is putting that knowledge into action. It's just the way we like to lay out our broadcast here on International Gospel Hour. And this segment, I want to go back to John 6 and verse 68. The verse reads, But Simon Peter answered him, that being Christ, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. In John chapter 6, verses 63 through 68, wherein is this context of what Peter said, we find Jesus and his disciples. Now, there are some who are privately complaining or murmuring, as the text says, and there are some did not believe, and yet some that did. And after some departed, Jesus turned to the twelve and asked them, Will you also go away? Then, verse 68, we see Simon Peter's answer. Through Christ and His Word, we are reminded there is life in Christ and His Word. The great declaration from Peter. Today, friends, we ask Peter's question, Lord, to whom shall we go? But specifically, I want to do this and ask this question of to whom shall we go in times of trouble? It's very well possible something could be bothering you. You're struggling with something. Oh, you know, Jesus knew that we would have troubled hearts. I mean, he told his apostles in John 14, verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus knew we would have troubled hearts. And dear friends, when our hearts are troubled, to whom shall we go? If we seek the advice of someone, chances are they've learned that from the Bible. They've learned something of comfort to help. I mean, after all, did not Paul in 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 and 4 speak of comfort from God? and the comfort wherewith we are comforted, that we in turn comfort others? Well, indeed. And he assures us with a troubled heart that he is there. I want us to consider the phrase, to whom shall we go? And in this broadcast, let's ask this question. To whom shall we go when illness is diagnosed? You know, friends, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16 reminds us how our outward man perishes. And you know, one's faith may be strong. But when we receive shocking news of our health and how things can change, health of ourselves or a loved one, friends, it, it stuns and it floors us. I well remember the afternoon that I received a call from my dad. And he simply said, my son, I've got cancer. We knew daddy was going for testing. We knew that he was to hear back on biopsy. And we knew he was hurting in his side and dad had lung cancer. And when he called me and told me that afternoon, dear friends, the only thing that I could do 
is rely on my Savior and my faith in Him. And it was to my Lord I did go in prayer. Now, I immediately called my wife, to whom my Lord gave to me in marriage, and relied upon her. And I can remember that evening when I told the church, it was on a Wednesday, and told the church the encouragement that I received. You know, friends, chances are you've heard the same statement. Or, dear friends, it's a good possibility you just might. You might hear a statement about a loved one who is seriously ill or maybe even in your life. If you'll permit me, let's handle aright this matter with the truth. Things that were of help to me and I hope will be of help to you. Let the following be of help. Number one, when you get tough news, accept it. I mean, folks, there it is. It is there. Yes, it hurts. You cry and you ache and it affects you and you think about it. It's there, but you know what you are facing. You know what's there and now it's time to go to work. Listen, friends, you are not alone. Others are facing that with you. Others will face it with you. Others have faced it before. Dear friends, keep that one thing in mind. When you get the news, it's a stunner. Accept it, and at that time, let's go to work. Number two, look for the opportunity at that moment for strength and comfort. Friends, don't come out and say, let me go off by myself. You may do that. But look at that moment when you get the news. Meet it with strength and comfort. In other words, when the problems arise, no matter how big they are, tell the problem how big your God is. I mentioned about that afternoon that Dad called me, Bible study that night, the encouragement of individuals. When I announced about Daddy and he would undergo treatments, the beloved brothers and sisters were right there afterwards. There were hugs. There was encouragement. There were tender words. Can we send your dad notes? Can we send your dad cards? One couple came up to me with wonderful news that they were expecting their first child. Did that lift me up and comfort me? Well, you bet it did. I think about Ruth when they laid little Obed in her arms. The Bible talked about how she was refreshed and comforted far term from where she was in chapter 1. Call me Mara, for the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. Dear friends, that evening, there were many Tituses that came my way. And I love this verse of 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 6, when Paul says, Nevertheless, God, that comforts those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. There are individuals that are there to comfort and to help you and to encourage you. Rely upon that strength. There it is. But battle back with those who are with you and for you. Number three, see what the doctors say and proceed onward. Now keep in mind, friends, God is in control and good doctors can be better doctors through the great physician who is able to help them and comfort you. Let the doctors know the power of prayer is evident in your life. But please now note the words of James 5, 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, this is written to the Christian, not a person who is not a churchgoer or one who is not obedient unto God. Notice it's the effective and fervent prayer of one who is righteous. But see what the doctors say, go with it. When the doctors say, let's go with this approach, that doctor has the skill, the ability, and relies upon others to help them with that decision. And that brings me to number four, take it a day at a time. Doctor may look at you 
doctor may look at you, I should say, and says, well, you have X months to live. Well, friends, doctors may give a best guess based on experience, but good doctors will quickly tell you they are not God. You know, I can remember when dad was diagnosed with the cancer and my sister asked the doctor, how long did it look based on what he knew? And to tell you the truth, what he said, daddy actually lived longer. And you know, folks, this came to mind talking with daddy one day. His attitude was, he said, you know, my son, it, it is what it is. It, it, if this don't get me, something else will. He said, who knows? He said, a heart attack could take me tomorrow. And you know something, my son, a heart attack could take you tomorrow. Well, you know, he was right, friends. All we can do is take the day we have before us, and we're only as good as the day we have. Look at it by Scripture. Grasp these three things with me. Number one, let's take the day at hand and be thankful for it. For in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 24, through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I hope in Him to rise every morning to take His compassions that are brand new again, to take the Lord as our portion, take the day at hand and be thankful for it. And think about it. The writing here in the book of Lamentations is about in the middle of a book that means to lament or to cry over the destruction of Jerusalem and how bad off they went, how bad off they were, rather, when they went away from God. But take the day at hand to be thankful for it. All we have is today. Number two, fret not of yesterday. It's gone. In Philippians 3, 13 and 14, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward toward those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Dear friends, fret not of yesterday. Take the day at hand. Yesterday is gone. Take the day at hand. But third, under this thought, fret not of tomorrow. Allow Jesus to speak from Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Again, dear friends, take the day at hand. It's been put this way. Let's see if I can remember it. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. It's pretty cool. Next, friend, look for little victories. Seek the good in every doctor's report. You may get some tough news within, but seek some good. What can I take from this to help me? Let that doctor know you are praying for him or her and appreciate him or her. Have a little snack with the one that is sick. You know, Daddy loved those little crystal hamburgers. Now, I'm not trying to give crystal some... Well, I guess in a way that I am, they're still pretty good. But find a snack. Daddy loved those. Get out and reminisce while driving around. Watch a ball game or whatever's available that you can enjoy together. Enjoy moments that you'll never trade. Moments that you'll never forget. And you just might enjoy that moment that you would have never had otherwise. Next, please grasp this one. Don't blame God. You know, when sin entered in the world in Genesis 3 through the serpent's deception and mankind's accepting, God had the plan in eternity before time began to save us from sin. We note that from Ephesians 3, 10 and 11 and Revelation 13, verse 8, it's Christ. Dear friends, when sickness hits, it's because of sin. And I lay the blame at the feet of the one who brought sin into the world, and that is Satan himself. And when problems hit, friends, God is the one to whom we turn to and we need to stay closer to Him and not just call on Him when needed. We ought to need Him daily. So friend, to whom shall we go when illness is diagnosed? Dear friends, the Lord has the answers for 
he was diagnosed with the sickness of mankind to bear it for us. Isaiah 53 and 1 Peter 2, 24. Friends, has physical news today caused you to think about your spiritual life? Has something brought you to a point that you think, I've got to get life right? Dear friends, hear the gospel of Christ as we note in Romans 10, 17. Words that we can understand, Matthew 15, 10. Believe what you hear, for it is of necessity, according to Hebrews eleven six 6 and John three sixteen. Respond to the command of repentance in Luke 13, 3 and verse 5 and in Acts 2, verse 38. Confess Christ as the Son of God in Matthew 10, 32 and 33 and Acts 8 and verse 37. To be baptized, to be saved, Mark 16 and verse 16. For your sins to be remitted, Acts 2, verse 38, as they are washed away, Acts 22, 16. Baptism will put you in Christ as you put on Christ, Galatians 3, 27 and Romans 6, 3 through 6. You'll be added to the church, Acts 2.47, as you walk faithful for our Lord, Revelation 2.10. To whom shall we go? We always will go to Christ. And to God be the glory. Let's pause. Let's share with you our free Bible course. And I'll be back to wrap up our broadcast. The International Gospel Hour offers a free Bible study course by mail. Study at home and at your pace. Please call toll-free at 1-855-IGH-6988 and leave your name, address, and just say, Home Study. You may also go to our website at internationalgospelhour.com, click on the Contact tab, and again, leave your name, address, and type, Home Study. We'll send it right away. Friend, I know I talked about a lot of things today concerning to whom shall we go, and if you're battling an illness or have, have rather a loved one that's battling an illness, would you be so kind if you'd like to reach out to us through our, uh, through our internet, internationalgospelhour.com, our website, shall I say. Send us a message. We will pray for your loved one. I'll be glad to share with you the information that I just shared in track form. I'll mail that to you. Give us your name and address, and you'll receive that absolutely free. I mean, friend, the authority of God, the greatness of Christ, the comfort of that authority. Well, indeed, friends, to whom shall we go? There is none other. And to God be the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And thank you for joining me today on the International Gospel Hour broadcast. And until next time, friends, keep watching. Jesus who died for you, Jesus can save you. Did you know that he's the one, son of the one God, son of the living God, Jesus can save you. Jesus all day, Jesus every day, Jesus when I go to bed, Jesus when I wake. I want to live a life so I hear him say, Well done, my child, enter in.